Hey, beautiful. Pamela Jones, actress. You're here. You're obviously a friend of Danielle. Yes, I'm here to support her accessory line. You see that? This bracelet is actually named after me. It's called the Tamala. Oh, I know. Um, Danielle is explaining to us how she makes her jewelry and if she's inspired by her friends. So let's look at this one. Very cute. I like how it shakes. It's got the leaves. Oh, and then the heart charm. The heart. Cute. Yeah, she's got great jewelry. Love it. So nice of you to come to WTLA and support. Oh, well, you know what? I'm uh, one of her best friends, and I totally support everything that she does. And she inspires me to do better with dressing and accessorizing, you know, so I really love her line. Yeah, she's so fashion forward. She is. You know, sometimes I call her up, I'm like, D, I got this event I have to go to. What should I wear? And she's like, well, first of all, none of your jewelry. <laughs> you got to remember that mind. I always do, though. It's beautiful. Okay, so uh, one of the things that we're doing is trying to tell stylists or salon owners around the country that uh, by doing events like this, it can help promote their business by bringing people in, interacting with a jewelry designer, also a makeup artist, and it allows, like you've never been here before. I love this place. So it exposes uh, salons. You know, because of the recession, a lot of salon owners don't know what to do. So we're trying to encourage them to host events like this because it brings people like Tamla into the salon and hopefully maybe she'll become a client. You know, not. But we're happy you're here, yeah. I love to get my hair done at beautiful places. We have to introduce you to Kaya, yeah. She's amazing. I know Kaya. You know Kaya. Very well. Yeah. She's a hairdresser of all celebrities yeah. that are hot. So she's one of our stylists here, so we're lucky to have her here. I need to be a part of that clientele. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you do. She does everyone from Jennifer Hudson. Gabrielle, Tyra. Everybody. She needs to do you. She needs to do it. So I'll be back. Uh, I'm here with uh, Kaya Wright. She's our top stylist here in the uh, One Chicombi Los Angeles location. Uh, she has a lot of celebrity clients. She's an amazing person, understands hair. She's been doing this for a long time. It's been a long journey. Not only that, she's actually developing her own product. But before you get to that level, she's made a huge impact not only to her clients, to the celebrities, but regular clients are still coming here that she gives a deal to because she's compassionate about people and the economy and their lifestyle. It's not just all about celebrities. So Kai, how do you find that balance? Um, one thing about me, it's all about just giving that everyday woman that Hollywood look. Like they all want to, you know, they want to look like what they see on TV. They want to change their image. They want to, they want me to bring that whole energy to their life and their look and their style and everything and they trust me and you know Portra Comey is a pretty much it's a high-end salon it's a little unaffordable right now in this economy but I just want every woman to feel amazing look amazing and I just want her to have that look that Hollywood look you know and so so you're taking you're saying okay I'm a celebrity stylist yeah. but I'm gonna make you feel like a celebrity so even if you feel good for that day that's worth a million dollars it's client. worth a million dollars you know, just so. to influence someone and, uh, by just changing their image and how they feel and, their, and it changes the, it influences their lifestyle their work life their boyfriend husband life <laughs> I mean just everything and I want to give them that look whatever it takes even if I have to discount the prices Whatever I have to do, I want to give each and every woman that look. And I want her to leave here feeling amazing and having the Warren Chacomi experience. I think that's most important, you know? Because in a lot of the ethnic salons, they don't have, they, they don't get this experience where it's upscale, it's, you know, right at your service, it's coffee, water, drinks. I mean, you know, you might be sitting next to a celebrity, you know, we don't get that in the ethnic world if you go past Pico. <laughs> so to come on this side of you know West Hollywood it's just it's a great experience and I want to bring that to them you know I think those stylists that work in in the inner city do great work they do amazing day in work. day out they're busy and I think uh, sometimes they're not appreciated yeah I know this is a whole different world for them but yeah. I think we, we have to appreciate what they do. Oh, and totally. they do make their clients I come out. from that world. So you come from that world? I come from that world, you know, so I totally get it. And this was a big jump for even me, you know, coming out and just kind of stepping outside of that box and my comfort zone to work at an establishment like this. I mean, it took a while. I was very intimidated. You know, it it was a lot for me. You know, I went, I knocked on many doors before I came here and I met Kaz, you know, many, many doors. And I was so scared. So. It's not like, you know, this is better, but it's just a whole nother world that 
you know, was great for me. No, you know what it's about? It's about educating yourself. Yeah. If you come from the inner city, you can't say, well, you can't just sit there and just give up. You've got to make yourself better. Yeah. You make people feel good every day yeah. by learning your skills, making your skills better, yeah. taking classes, learning how to speak, taking yeah. television, uh, public speaking, yeah. all that helps you as a hairdresser. Yeah. So, it's and, all about education yeah. in different levels, whether you're going to college or you go to hair school yeah, come, and, and, and continue come, your yeah. education. Coming here for me is like going to get your master's. I mean, yeah. this was like the next level for me. It really was. It was like getting your hair master's, you know what I mean? Like, I was, I, I was totally afraid, but I was like, I got to do it. And I wanted to get out of my comfort zone. You know, I wanted to learn something new. I wanted to learn about products. And the ethnic salons, we don't sell products. So we don't know anything about products and different textures of hair. I just wanted to learn something different and this is the type of salon that offered me that, you know? So we have this program called Hairstylist for Life program. It's actually almost non-profit. It's just to have big stylists like yourself encourage smaller stylists to do better because the program is about helping clients feel better. Right. And so it all kind of translates and those clients every day can say on their phone, on their Twitter, I went to Kaya Ride, I feel good, I go home, my kids tell me I look great, or my boyfriend tells me I look great. So it's called Hair Stylist for Life program. And it's three pairs of scissors. I right, definitely, definitely a hairstylist for life. I've never had another job. This is it for me. I am a hairstylist for life. And me, me, it's been forever. I think it's at the top. Don't tell. <laughs> It was a star-studded event here at the Amica Styles Chunk Show at Warren Jacome, Los Angeles. We learned so much about how salons can market with other companies like jewelry, hair, and what a great turnout it will be. So make sure you stay watching Stylist Star.